welcome to our prayer service for eighth week. As we come to the end of the academic year, it seems like the perfect opportunity to give thanks for the blessings we've received over the past 12 months. For the love we've been given by our friends, family, colleagues and classmates. For the progress that we've made both academically and spiritually. And for the support we've been granted by the college in order to help us achieve our goals. We pray that those leaving our college community this year will be able to take the happy memories that they've made here with them for the rest of their lives and will always feel like a part of the extended St Hilda's community. At the same time, we'd also like to take a moment to pray for a brighter future for the college. In this service, we'd like to pray for an end to racial injustice, an end to the pain brought about by discrimination of any kind, and for an end to the suffering caused by the coronavirus. We hope that the next academic year will bring with it positive change that will improve the college and the whole university community so that everybody, regardless of their race, religion or ethnic background, will be able to have the best possible experience here during their time at Oxford. Now, without further ado, let's begin the service. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. Before the angels, I will bless you. I will adore before your holy temple. I thank you for your faithfulness and love, which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called, you answered. You increased the strength of my soul. All earth's kings shall thank you when they hear the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the Lord's ways. How great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet he looks on the lowly, and the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of affliction, you give me life and frustrate my foes. You stretch out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. Merciful God, we pray for an end to racial injustice in all its forms and places. We confess our failures to speak out against discrimination. We pray for support for those affected. Let their voices be heard. Allow us to create reconciliation and bring us peace. We pray for all people suffering from the coronavirus crisis, whether they are ill, are grieving for loved ones, or are burdened by the impact it has on our lives. Watch over those caring for others and give wisdom to our scientists and leaders so that we will overcome this pandemic.
we pray for unity in this country and for a harmonious relation to Europe and the world. In these times of change, give us courage to overcome disparities and help us to build a future in which all may prosper and share. Finally, we pray for our community in this last week of term. Let all be confident in their studies and work, wherever they are, and give strength to the finalists in their exams. We thank you for our chaplain, Brian Mountfoot, who has so graciously cared for our college. God of life and hope, we pray to you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. From Under Milkwood by Dylan Thomas Every morning when I wake, dear Lord, a little prayer I make. O oh, please do keep thy lovely eye on all poor creatures born to die. And every evening at sundown, I ask for a blessing on the town. For whether we last the night or no, I'm sure is always touch and go. We are not wholly bad or good, who live our lives under Milkwood, and thou, I know, wilt be the first to see our best side, not our worst. Oh, let us see another day. Bless us all this night, I pray. And to the sun we will all bow and say good night, but just for now. I first came to help out at St Hilda's in 1989, when I was vicar of the University Church, conducting a service each Thursday evening. The chapel on the ground floor of Millam Ford comprised three rooms that had been knocked together into one, long, austere, and without aesthetic allure. On alternate weeks, we held a discussion group in what is now the principal's room, then occupied by Dr. Jane Mellenby, who had decorated it with antique furniture and Japanese porcelain. And we'd have eight or nine students attending, partly because uh, Jane told her psychology students it was their duty to come. The first chapel warden was Mo Booth, the great-great-granddaughter of William Booth, founder of the Salvation Army. Each year I had a different undergraduate assistant, right up to the present, with the splendid Aileen and the splendid Rachel. When Harriet Davidson was chapel warden, we held an annual dinner for Christians in college, attended by 78 people. Our high liturgical moments were always Founders' Day and Christmas, and latterly those joint choir occasions with Oriel and Corpus, not to mention the Catholic Mass. When I was chaplain of Sydney Sussex College, Cambridge, in the 70s, I reckoned to know every student in college. It was a full-time job and had a thriving historic chapel building. I played sport with the undergraduates and had such a large entertainment budget I stood at the JCR bar and bought drinks for anyone who cared to join me. The way to a person's religion has always been through their stomach. Although founded by Christian women and named after a Christian saint, St Hilda's has never been quite like that. In any case, for most of its history, this has been a women's college. And for a high proportion of students, when it came to extracurricular activity, the incentive was to get out and meet men, and that included singing and worshipping together. In a sense, until 2008, like the Moabite Ruth in Hebrew scripture, I was an alien in a foreign land. Now I come to the end of my chaplaincy here, and many of you come to the end of your time in Oxford. For each of us there will be a sense of disappointment and anticlimax because we cannot raise a toast to each other on the banks of the beautiful Charwell River or put on our best to togs and hug our friends. Maybe without such joyful distraction we shall remember more vividly our gratitude to this place which has nurtured us into adulthood and formed bonds that will never be broken. 
In recent reflections, I've been looking at some of the foundational religious ideas, such as spirit and life force and self. I will end with the giving of thanks. It grows out of the same sense of awe and wonder that gives shape to self. It is a form of generosity and self-giving, the desire to show gratitude. This week, research showed how life-enhancing kindness and service to others can be. It prolongs your life. Well, so does gratitude. Oxford had it written into its daily life in the shape of grace before meals. Gratias tibi agimus. We give you thanks, O Lord. These Latin graces are considered outmoded by some, but whether you believe in a divine reality or not, the point is, it is a valuable discipline to look beyond yourself and to give thanks for your existence and your food. You might think prayer is all about asking for things, petitionary prayer, healing, care of your loved ones, the strength to succeed and prosper. But far more importantly, it is about penitence and thanksgiving. Just trying to list all the things you are grateful for is an exercise in positive thinking, especially perhaps during a time of vulnerability and economic hardship like the present. In normal Oxford life, I'm grateful for the value added of being together in community and eating together, which is of course historically a monastic model, and learning from others studying completely different disciplines from yourself. Then there are the libraries, museums, gardens, concert halls, making music, putting on plays, rowing and all sorts of sports. As the Cambridge philosopher Simon Blackburn puts it, books, concerts and bicycles are the components of many a good life. St Hilda's competes at the highest level in the academic stakes, while endeavouring to be open, friendly, unstuffy, unintimidating, to keep the best of tradition while being unafraid to ditch those traditions which limit understanding. I suspect if we had a statue of Cecil Rhodes, it would be taken down, although personally I'd argue against that on the grounds that there are better ways of making sense of history. Although I have to admit, I am indifferent, totally indifferent to statues in general, unless you include the great sculptures of Greece and Rome, where beauty trumps representation. Christianity takes gratitude a step further by emphasising the importance of being thankful for being itself, for life, opportunity, and the loving acceptance by God of every individual. We are known by God, who is eternal mind, and therefore we have meaning. Dag Hammarskjöld, who was the youngest person ever to hold the post of Secretary General of the United Nations, wrote one book entitled Markings, in which he offered this thought, this prayer, for all that has been, thanks, for all that shall be, yes. Thank you.